Welcome to Eye Contact. I'm Paul Rosen. Extended depth of focus IOLs are the latest option that we can offer patients hoping for some form of multifocality and spectacle independence. And today I'm talking with Professor David Spalton about how EDOS fit into practice today. David, welcome. Thank you. We've already seen many multifocal options. and What do you think of the potential advantages for EDOF lenses? Well, I think, Paul, that they have increasing advantages, really, and I've used them, and I've found that I've tended to go to more to EDOF lenses than to using a trifocal lens, mm -hmm. simply because uh, the patients get less dysphotopsia. Uh, and the thing that really haunts you as a surgeon is the unhappy patient mm -hmm. with dysphotopsia because really you're faced then with explanting the lens, which is always a, a, a fairly unpleasant option to have to take. How do EDOF lenses work? Because they're said to be different from the traditional uh, multifocal, trifocal lens. Yeah, well, I, th I think we're now seeing, it's, it's amazing how the optics have changed with time and they get better, don't they? Um, so the, the, I think they work on a diffractive basis mainly, although there are refractive ones, of course, um, with the interference pattern. And I, I gather, I don't really understand the optics, they're so sophisticated, but I gather the harmonics sort of alter the light distribution. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the advantages of them, of course, is that you lose less light. With some of the early bifocal mm -hmm. lenses, you lost up to 20% of the light yeah. coming into the eye, and patients did complain of poor contrast. So there are quite a few EDOF lenses on the market now. How do you just sort of separate between them all? I think you go with the ones that you have experience of. But there are other interesting ones coming. So we're seeing this new concept of monofocal, monofocal EDOF lenses, mm. which, are, which, are, which is a refractive lens um, with an extended depth of focus, perhaps not quite as much, but once again with much less tendency to dysphotopsia. And it's, I think they're going to become a very good option as a sort of standard lens myself, really. I mean, how do you distinguish between those patients who want to have a, or potentially would be suitable to have an EDOF lens or a trifocal lens? When would you use which lens? Right, well, there's no doubt that with a trifocal you get better near vision, but it's at the expense of some increased dysphotopsia. With the EDOF lenses, you know, it's, it's distance and intermediate, but with a bit of monovision, you can extend that range of focus quite well. And for a lot of patients these days, of course, they don't need to read like that. They're using laptops, computers, and that sort mm. of thing. And the other thing I had to tell patients with EDOF lenses was that the illumination really matters. You know, if you're in a very good bright light, you can read much better. So there's a range of there too. And do you still require the same sort of image processing and neuroadaptation with EDOF so that you do with uh, trifocals or multifocals? I think you probably a bit less so uh, in my experience. People adapt to them much more easily. Okay. Uh, but uh, w of course with any multifocal type lens you have to exclude the oddball personality <laughs> really, the people who are going to haunt you. Yeah. And, and that's part of the art and practice of medicine I think really. To, to, ex to exclude those people who are so pernickety that they're going to be searching for every little thing and comparing one eye with the other and that sort of thing. It's, it's okay, so let's talk about patient selection. Um, patient comes in and they could have a monofocal lens. How do you handle that consultation? How do you decide well, I think, whether I, to direct I, I them one way or the other? I think it's different for the cataract patient mm. to the person who wants uh, a refractive lens exchange. Mm. With the cataract patients, um, I think in some ways they're, they're more tolerant of a bit of dysphotopsia. And the, the ideal patient, I think, was an elderly lady um, who's perhaps a bit hyperopic, um, is what I call not a high visual requirement user. Mm. You know, she reads the newspaper in the morning, she takes the grandchildren to school, that sort of thing, mm. but she's not there reading War and Peace mm. for eight hours a day. So I th those are the ideal patients, but I think with experience, one extends that range much more mm. into the more active um, patient, mm. the more myopic patients, which is quite surprising. I've put them in uh, myopes, which I used to avoid with the trifocals, really, because they never got quite the reading vision that mm. they'd had before. And do the same concerns about if they have retinal problems or have glaucoma? Yes, absolutely. Is that an exclusion? Ab abso absolutely. Um, I think these are premium lenses and they need a premium examination prior to surgery. Mm. So um, I 
only put them in people with a normal macula. I think an OCT prior to surgery is obligatory, really. Mm. Um, I, the other things, of course, are with any multifocal, you've got to hit emetropia, mm. you've got to treat the astigmatism. Mm. So if you, there's a sort of a 15 dark to myope comes in, would you use it in that sort of patient? I think I would, I, they would probably not have a normal macula. So I think that would okay. um, be an exclusion. But uh, I've certainly put them in people with six, seven dabs as myopia. Okay. And where yeah. does monovision fit in uh, in the, the uh, EDOF uh, picture? Um, well, I think that you could have the micro monovision, a, a little bit myopia in mm. the non-dominant eye, or, although I think you know, which eye is dominant can be a little bit sort of mm. variable and a bit under, it's a discussable thing. Um, so I think a little bit of you know, half adopted, three quarters adopted myopia certainly extends that range mm -hmm. of focus. In, in monofocal lenses with monovision, I restricted it only to patients who'd actually had it with contact lenses okay. because they, some of those patients, you know, if, if, if they're used to it and they know what to expect, they're happy, but not everyone was. Yeah. Uh, with um, EDOFs, uh, dysphotopsias are still an issue. Yeah. Uh, and you said that it's not such an issue with, uh, as with the trifocals, mm. but it's still a problem, isn't it? Yes, it is. There's a small percentage who, who complain. And are they, can you predict in any way? Well, I, I think it's difficult, but I, I think, once again, it's, it, it's weeding out those people who are likely to be obsessive. Okay, okay. Uh, and you, if you keep all that in mind and all the uh, things we've been talking about, um, who do you think is the perfect candidate for uh, an EDOF lens? And I was going to then ask you, uh, which is the perfect lens for EDOF? I, I, I think which is the perfect lens. I mean, the, the Symphony's been out there a long time, mm -hmm. most experienced with that, but then there's lenses from a lot of other companies mm -hmm. out now. And there are these new lenses also, which are, as I say, the, the, the monofocal mm -hmm. lenses, but with an extended, with a broader sort of defocus curve mm -hmm. to it. Um, I think you pays your money, it takes your choice, mm. to be honest, really. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not sure with the EDOF, with the true EDOF lenses that are out there at the moment, there's that much difference from a clinical point of view with them, really. I mean, certainly in my experience, they, you know, whether the patient reads there or there, um, the patients, are, you know, they tend to move their arms and adapt, really. So I don't think there's, uh, in, in, in my experience, I didn't find a great d distinguishing mm. factor between the various okay. ones. And when you see a patient for, say, cataract surgery, do you offer them all options, emetropia, monovision, and uh, some form of uh, multifocality? Um, yes, but I think you can lead the discussion. If you mm. think a patient's going to be suitable and, and you offer it to mm. them, I, th I think it, you can sort of lead them and say, would you, you know, th this is the option mm. for you. You would be suitable, in my opinion. Mm. Um, equally, well, the ones that you think are probably not going to be suitable, there's probably not a lot of point going down that uh, line. I think just to tell them, look, um, there are these lenses, but I don't think you're the ideal candidate. You know, you've got glaucoma, you're, you're a diabetic. Mm. I've, I've always been very re reluctant to put multifocals into anyone who's a diabetic, mm. whether or not they have a maculopathy. Mm. If they have a maculopathy, definitely not. Mm. But um, someone who's... Um, relative, got a relatively long life expectancy, be very cautious there about putting in a multifocal lens. Yes, because there's always the risk that 10 years down the line... Well, 10 years down the line, they get their maculopathy and their vision's poor, and then, you know, you're in a difficult situation yeah. because no one likes expanding lenses, yeah. particularly at that length after surgery. Yeah. So do you think EDOS will become the uh, standard lens for all? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think, you know, I think if you're going to... If you want to have someone who you really want to guarantee a surgical outcome... A monofocal lens has a lot to be said for it. Okay. You know, this is, you know, I mean, you know, if you really want to guarantee to someone that they're going to have as near excellent visual quality, and I think it also because there is a trade off with these things. I mean, you're sacrificing convenience for a bit of quality of vision. vision. Yeah. And um, I have to say that if it was me, I was going to ask that. Go <laughs> <on>. <laughs> I, w I, w I want, I'm a nerd, I want high quality vision. Yeah. I would go for a monofocal lens. Emetropia or myopia? Um, I'm a myope. Um, I've worn spectacles ever since I was about six. Mm -hmm. I would be left minus 2.5. I'd have my um, astigmatism corrected because I want to be able to take my glasses off and still see my, you know, what, what I'm doing, really. Okay. Um, I'm very fond of fishing, and to tie a fishing fly on, 
it's quite nice. It's, it's, it's quite nice to you know to be able to see and you've yeah. got to get the, the nylon through the eye of the fly and that sort of thing. Okay. <laughs> Very good. So, are you the fussy patient that wouldn't do with the? I, I would be. I would. I think I would haunt you. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> David, thank you very much. Okay. And thank you for joining us. And for more information, please visit us at eurotimes.org.